Thank you so much, Madam Chair. You know, we've seen a lot of um, commentary from my colleagues across the aisle and, uh, you know, claiming that the Build Back Better plan, reconciliation, infrastructure, social infrastructure, et cetera, is some big socialist conspiracy. And I just want to address that very quickly because the idea of a current package where we are debating means testing, modest investments, um, minimize climate action as socialist is an insult to both socialists specifically and the general public's intelligence generally. But um, moving on, I think that when we talk about the issue of housing and particularly public housing, we need to make sure that we're centering the folks who are impacted most by this issue. And to hear commentary that these hearings are a waste of time and that they are unnecessary when we have individuals who have experienced homelessness testifying right before this committee is just frankly unprofessional and it's wrong. Um, this is for folks who are curious as to why this, this is, um, you know, we've had several housing hearings. Uh, this is a housing committee. It is the financial services committee also, uh, previously known as a banking and housing committee. So this is our job and we're here to do our job. Now, most of all, um, I wanna thank our witnesses for coming in. And we often talk about dollar figures, X billion here, X billion there. Um, but without really understanding the human impact of what this, these dollar amounts add up to, it's very difficult for people to wrap their minds around what these proposals can do. Without housing, economic mobility and security, opportunity, access to health care, a safe living environment, all these other things are without, out of reach. You can't get a job, it's, or it's very difficult to get a job uh, when you are unhoused. Uh, now, Mr. Harrison, um, I want to thank you for your testimony uh, and really bringing to light everything that, um, that a lot of members, you know, may not know about the experience of having been unhoused. What do you, in your experience today, what would have helped you improve your living situation then that you find is actually still missing for the people that you assist today? Thank you for the question. And I think uh, along with the opportunity to apply for and hopefully receive a housing voucher. A lot of my clients need additional supports uh, and the process is pretty complicated. Uh, I've been able to help uh, my clients, for instance, understand how the value of a voucher is different in uh, each zip code in the continuum of care that I'm working in. Uh, but I think that a lot of people that are experiencing homelessness have really lost their social support network and that uh, services that help support people's efforts to address the issues that have contributed to or uh, become greater while they're experiencing homelessness would be very helpful. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Harrison. Uh, my, my last question for you is, the experience of homelessness really stays with us as a society and on individuals who have experienced it long after they find housing. Uh, how would you describe what some of the long, the lifelong impacts of having experienced um, homelessness have been? And how, how do you see this among other people that you know or have encountered about the effects of homelessness after even a person finds housing? Thank you again. Uh, some of the long-term impacts of that period in my life were that uh, I was, uh, my social mobility was downward and uh, I was in poverty and it takes a long time to offset the impact 
and I'm only just now really emerging from that state of poverty. And so um, a lot of things are still out of reach for me. Thank you. I wish you the best in, in your future endeavors. Thank you.